I just wanted to move on to another very important topic, especially for us. Um, and that is the importance of a free media in any country. And uh, you talk about the importance of uh, how the uh, Bengal famine happened as was extended and got much worse because the media was suppressed, uh, both in England and here. And uh, this is what you write. The fact is that even as Bengal was ravaged by a famine, the likes of which had not been seen since the 18th century at the beginning of the British rule in Bengal, neither the parliament in Westminster nor the ever active British newspapers had sufficiently extensive reports or discussions about it. Indeed, the British public was kept amazingly uninformed. The high, Bengal, high circulation Bengali newspapers were, as I've said, censored. And the grand English newspaper of Calcutta, The Statesman, which was British owned and edit, edited by a loyal Englishman, Ian Stevens, voluntarily chose a policy of not discussing the famine in the inst instant interest of solidarity for the war effort. The informational blackout only ended when Ian Stevens revolted in October 1943. He saw clearly that he was betraying his profession. He was a journalist, but was writing nothing about the most important calamity around him. The statesman published vitriolic attacks on the British policy regarding the famine with news coverage providing evidence. The British Parliament had not discussed the man-made disaster before Stevens spoke. All that changed immediately after the statesman's reporting. And writing about today, you say that altogether different reasons of authoritarian domestic politics the restrictions are sometimes no less intrusive now than during the colonial rule. Yeah. So there was both censorship as well as voluntary so-called restraint, not yeah. being ju proper journalists, right? Yes, and that sometimes the voluntary restraint could come from a sense of patriotism. And that, of course, uh, Ian Stevens thought he had mistakenly imbibed. Uh, but sometimes it also comes from fear for government intervention. Right. I mean, uh, I was pleased to see that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court raising the question that 75 years after the end of the uh, British colonial rule, why do we need some of these colonial provisions? like preventive detention, for example. Preventive detention was a great um, uh, tool of harassment and, 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 and keeping country in check. Uh, right. You, you, with the drug. And uh, a large number of my relations were in prison at that time without uh, being, there being any conviction. But we all thought that once the war once the colonial rule ended, then they will go. And it's up to the credit of the government that came in immediately, that's the Congress government, not to eliminate them. Why, why, what was the need to keep them? Why could not they have eradicated all these rules, whether it be preventive detention or it be the criminality of homosexual behavior? All these were British rules, which could have been eliminated. But what has happened is that what was present, but not very powerfully uh, executed, uh, now is executed often with very strong force. And a lot of people I know, uh, extremely respectable people, extremely non-violent people, being locked up uh, using that. And the argument given is, well, these rules were there, even under Congress, and now it could be applied more. I think the question that the new Chief Justice raises is, 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 is the legitimate one, namely, okay, but 75 years have gone since colonial rule ended. Why do you need the uh, 
the in the, uh, the instruments of suppression that the colonial rulers needed. Now you're not ruling a colony; you're ruling a democracy. So I think that is a very big thing, and that's not uh, um, uh, the force behind is is connected with uh, uh, driving um, a bit of terror. Yeah. To the, to I mean, the, it is amazing that you're comparing what was done under the British colonial system with what is happening now. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we were all convinced. You see, I was growing up in, uh, in under British rule in my school days. Right. And, and uh, we were all convinced that as soon as India becomes independent, all these would go. But they didn't go. And now it has got much strengthened and applied very often uh, in, in a way that uh, I think is really shameful in terms of what um, we could have expected as citizens of a democratic country, the first democracy in a non-white society in the world. <laughs>